Hello there and welcome to another Power News and Crime tutorial. In this tutorial we're going to learn how to make any object pop in Blender. So we're going to be learning how to make these animations that you should see on the screen here. And uh, let's get to it. So to start off let's type uh, numpad 7 on our keyboard to go into top view and then we're going to bring the camera into our view. So type control and then alt and then numpad 0 and delete the default cube by piping X and clicking delete on your keyboard. So now we're going to type in and we're going to scroll through here till we see display and we're going to uncheck grid 4 and uh, we'll keep X and Y selected for now. So now we're going to add an object that's going to pop. So type shift A on your keyboard select mesh and click circle. Let's change the number of vertices to 6. And now we're going to type S on our keyboard, move our cursor out, and left click to confirm the sizing. So what we're going to do now is going to type tab on our keyboard, and we're going to type E to extrude this, but then we're going to right click. So basically we duplicated all the vertices over and to make sure they stayed in the same place. So that if we press tab and if we scroll through here for the display and uncheck outline selected, you'll see we basically have our object has disappeared. So let's recheck outline selected so we can see that again. So we're going to add a shape key that's going to just thicken this in. So let's go into the mesh data tab, click plus to add a basis shape key and plus to add a key number one. So the basis shape key is basically just going to be the original shape of our object. And uh, key number one is going to be what our object's going to morph to. So type tab and type S, move your cursor in and left click. And tab to exit edit mode. So now if you see we can adjust the value of this shape key and we kind of get a pop. So what we're going to do is we're going to switch this to AV Sync so we can get started animating. And uh, we're going to change it to 60 frames per second so we have a smoother animation. So let's jump to frame 85 and go back into the mesh data tab and uh, type I and click scaling. And that just put a scaling keyframe for our object to be this size on frame 85. So now we are going to hover our cursor over the shape key value and type I there. So now on frame 85 our object will be this size and uh, it'll be basically disappeared on the vertices. So if we jump back to a previous frame let's go with frame 51. We'll size our object down slightly by typing S on our keyboard and just moving our cursor in and left clicking to confirm that and uh, we will actually pull the value up there on the shape key hover your cursor over that and type I and let's size it down completely S0 enter and type I for the scaling so let's type Alt A and you can see we get a pretty nice pop So that's looking pretty good. One thing we can do is we can add in a background and uh, type Shift A, mesh plane to add in your background, size it up by typing S and moving your cursor out and left click there. And let's go into the materials section, add a new material, and uh, make sure it's shadeless and put the color down. And GZ and just move it below our original animated shape and left click. So now what we can do is we can right click on our polygon here, click this here to add a new material, we'll name it polygon and uh, shadeless and make it blue. And let's go into material view so that we can get more accurate color representation how our object should be and if we just click around here you can get any any sort of color you want for your um, polygon 
I like I'd like to stick with blue, but we'll try we'll try pink for now. Reddish pink magenta. So we have our animated magenta polygon. And uh, so that we don't have to see the extra things in the background here, let's delete the lamp here by right clicking on it and typing X and clicking delete. And uh, we can uncheck X and Y so that we don't see the relation lines. So now you can see we just got our polypop. Alright, so we made our first object pop, which is a nice um, hexagon. Let's make another object pop. So um, let's select this plane, type M, hold down shift and click the next two layers because this will be our background for the next two layers. And let's turn off selection for it so that we can't accidentally select it when we are editing our future objects. So for the next animated polygon, we will use, go into the second layer, another circle. So shift A and the mesh circle. Put the vertices all the way down to three so that we get a nice triangle. So we're going to be making a triangle pop this time around. So we can click here and click polygon material and click plus to make it a different material. And we can change the material color to anything we want and we'll choose a nice yellow. And let's make the yellow a bit brighter by putting the value up to 1.2. All right. So now let's uh, add in our shape keys and uh, keyframe our object just like we did the first one. So on frame 85, size this up by typing S and left clicking. And uh, let's uh, type tab to go into edit mode, type E to extrude and right click to cancel that again. So press tab to go back into object mode. Go into the mesh object data tab and add a basis and a key one shape key and tab with key one selected and S to size that in and left click to confirm that and press tab to exit edit mode. So now if you see we adjust value and we get a nice triangular shape uh, thickening in. So Let's put the value back to zero, have a cursor over that and type I, and jump back to a frame 52, and put the value up to one, have a cursor over that and type I. So now you can see we get that popping out, and if we stay on frame 85, and also insert a scaling keyframe by typing I on your keyboard and clicking scaling, that's the scale our object will be, and we'll also make it on frame 52, which is where we inverted our first shape key keyframe, we will size it down to be really small so that you won't be able to see it. So in between key 52 and key 85, our object will be popping out. So type S0, enter, and type I and click scaling, and uh, let's uh, play this to see our nice triangle pop. Alright, so the next object we can really make pop is going to be a basic circle. So we've got our first layer of a, um, a nice polygon, hexagon. There's a second layer of the triangle, and uh, let's make our third layer just a regular run-of-the-mill circle. So select the um, third layer and shift a mesh circle, and let's change the number of vertices to 75. If we can get away with less vertices, that's good. But we still want a smooth circle, so we'll go with 75, so we get a nice and a smooth circle here. And uh, let's just jump straight to animating now. Jump to frame 85, size it up, and click left click and uh, I scaling. Type tab to go into edit mode E to through the vertices, right click to make sure the vertices stay on each other, tab to go back into object mode, plus to add a basis key, shape key, and uh, a key one shape key, and now 
our Q1 shape key will be tab to go into edit mode and thickening. So S and move the cursor in and left click there and tab to confirm that. So hover your cursor over this and type I. Jump back to frame 52 and put the value up here. Type I with your cursor hovered over it and size it down to zero and type enter. I and scaling. So if you type all day, we get our nice circle pop. So let's add a new material for this one. We'll finally make it blue. So select this one here, click the plus, and then, and just click to the blue. And uh, now we made the three objects pop. One thing we can uh, do is let's make another object, and uh, this is a fun shape that I like to make in Blender. So let's go to the next layer and make sure to select the plane and move it to this layer as well. So hold on your cursor or let's see. Okay, hold on shift and click on this layer and you should get your plane here. So now we are going to add in a rounded hexagon. So let's type shift A mesh circle. Let's change the number of vertices to six. And shift D to move that out there. Left click. And let's right click on this tab to go into edit mode. And let's right click on this while holding shift and just select all of these. And SY. And left click. And press tab to exit to that edit mode. Okay, so to, add, to round these edges out, we're going to use a subdivision surface modifier. So click add modifier subdivision surface. And you can see it's kind of adding a whole lot of edges onto our object. So what we're going to do is we're going to subdivide it manually so that we just get the edges rounded. So it's just going to add a lot of vertices and then the edges here should round out. So type W, click subdivide. And uh, let's change them, press the 3. And press tab to exit edit mode and you can see we've got a nice rounding going on here and if we change the view to three it's a little bit more rounded so we can apply this and uh, we're pretty much good so s left click move that out there and frame 85 i scaling go into the uh, shape keys tab Press tab and type A and E and right click there and press tab to go back into object mode. Add the basis shape key, add the key one, press tab to go back into edit mode and type S with your key one selected over there and just left click and size that in and press tab to go back into object mode. Now you can see we've got a nice rounded polygon pop when we adjust the value. So now we're going to keyframe this just like we keyframe the other objects. So let's keep the value down to zero. Have your cursor over that and type I. Jump back to frame 52. Um, put the value to 1. Have your cursor over that type I. S, 0, enter, and I, scaling. So we've inserted all our keyframes. Let's see how this polygon pop looks. So, it's a pretty nice shape pop, and we're going to add another material for it. Click new to add a new material, make it shapeless, and we'll name it round. So one thing we can do now that we've created our, our popping objects is we can kind of like sort of overlay them over each other. So let's... Uh, just duplicate them and resize them and make a nice cool effect. So let's shift D this. Put your cur cursor on uh, frame 85 and delete the scaling keyframe. So Alt I. And let's just make sure we're only deleting the scaling keyframe by going into the object section and just hover your cursor over that and type Alt I. Now we can scale this smaller by typing S and left clicking and reinsert the scaling keyframe. So I, scaling, 
Now we should play this. We get a nice, get a nice multi-rounded polygon pop. Now, uh, one thing you can also do is to smoothen out the animation. You can go into the you can split the screen here, go into the dope sheet. Make sure you're only adjusting keyframes for the selected object by selecting this cursor here, and you can speed up or slow down the animation by pulling this out here. And rewind and hold A. So let's slow it down a bit by pulling it back there. And that looks pretty good. So we've created all of our shape pops and uh, this tutorial is uh, pretty much finished. So if you want to, um, let's see, before we finish this tutorial, I'll show you guys how to render this out. Now we have another rendered tutorial on our channel that gets a little bit more in-depth rendering. But uh, this is for uh, pretty much OpenGL rendering, which is a very fast method for rendering in Blender. So let's uncheck outline selected so that you don't get those orange lines around your object when you're rendering. And you want to render OpenGL render options full sample, put 16 anti aliasing samples, and uh, to store it on your computer, you want to put the resolution up to 100%, and you can use the MPEG format. Make it MPEG 4 and uh, 14,000. You would choose a location on your computer to store this. So we'll just click desktop and we'll do Polygon Tutorial and click accept. But uh, that's just a quick way to get your get your animation rendering and you can just click render and open GL render animation. So thanks for watching this tutorial and if you're interested in other Blender stuff you might want to subscribe to our channel and check out some other interesting things you might have by clicking the cards that should be popping up right about now. You can also check out our Patreon at Partners in Crime GFX and we've released a Blender pre-made pack of these animations. We've actually released two. One is called Ultimate Motion Elements, and one is called Blend Shape. You can check those out by clicking the card here, or clicking the links in the descriptions. So, you can also leave a comment, let us know if there's anything you want to learn in Blender that you think you should recommend to us or suggest. And, uh, yeah. Thanks again for watching, and subscribe for more tutorials for partners and coordinated rendering of ideas, motion, and effects.